Howdy everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net, 1 o'clock on December 10th. Uh, so here we are in the quant analytics uh, dashboard thing. Um, just to let you know, I'm probably going to remove uh, the Forex analysis systematically generated and the CFD analysis table and charts systematically generated options uh, in the next little while. Just do that I'm not using either CFD or Forex any time just due to the um, video I put out on Friday just pertaining to the opportunities are just not there as compared to crypto um, so watch that video all right so when you go into the option here for cryptocurrency analysis generated systematically here's the uh, details so what we've got here is the most profitable, um, which I'll show you in a minute, DNT, BTC, hot Ethereum, QKC, uh, Bitcoin, um, and then we have our ranking file. Then we also have our stop loss as well. Uh, and these are the targets that we can set potentially if they're worthwhile. What we need to fi fa factor in are the whipsaws. So I'm going to be going through that in greater detail and uh, I haven't even looked at my uh, watch list here. Just give me a second here as I load that up in my Redis desktop manager. Uh, I'll probably add that in here on the watch list because that's the most probably important of all of these tables here. Um, so well, let's just do that first. Let's see what's on the watch list first. Uh, let me load. And then we want the watch list crypto. So here are the watch list now, the funny thing is a lot of people will cry about how the cryptocurrency space is just getting clobbered, which it is. Here we're on coinmarketcap.com. We're looking at a 24-hour um, moves uh, of the entire space of the top 100. You can clearly see the amount of uh, red here. So a good chunk of these are negative. But what do you care? Uh, what we care about are the winners and the movers. Uh, as you can see clearly in this list. Now, the difference between this and let's say six weeks ago is I was never logging and cross-referencing the current um, what's on the watch list against these whipsaws um, because we just remove everything that's uh, that's been recently on, on this whipsaw list over the last six to eight hours. And... Um, we don't trade those because those are probably higher, probably higher risk of having a whipsaw to move against you when you open up the positions. So what we do here is now um, the best thing to do is to download these reports, which I'm going to show you. So these these reports are the detail of um, all the content here that you'll be able to get access to. So the first thing I like to do just to get an overall consensus see what's moving are these movers here um, we have a variety of different movers here we have um, this new Bitcoin cash uh, SV uh, against Bitcoin moving at 24% these are hourly moves DNT Ethereum is moving up at 22% TUS DBNB is moving as well as TUS Ethereum. Now these are fairly unknown uh, crypto currency pairs to me, but as I get to know them throughout the remainder of the week, uh, we'll be able to see and understand the patterns and the nuances of these crypto pairs. So that's what's available. Those are what the movers are. But the other big thing I like to look at are the uh, is the volume of what is. What, what, what is trading by volume on Binance, because that's where we get this data from. So we want to look at our pie chart for the volume here. So here, um, this number three, the DNT is the big mover, uh, as well as this other one, TUS BTC is the other big mover as well. And then number five, Okay, so the top the top three clearly are DNT Ethereum at seventy point eight seven percent volume, followed by TUSD BTC 
follow, and that's at 16.7%, followed by QKC Ethereum uh, at 6.2%. So as I keep saying to people, as I did last night at my local meetup, that you'll, let's say six months ago, you'll see a batch of cryptocurrency pairs that have done well, have earned their keep uh, in terms of being added to something like Coinbase, and that's a sign of success for those cryptocurrency pairs. So what we have here is we have a new set of cryptocurrency pairs that are moving up up the ladder by volume and whatnot to uh, maybe get added to Coinbase, which will sh add the um, legitimacy to these coins. And you can clearly see that uh, since Friday, I'm seeing some winners, especially this DNT Ethereum and TUS, the BTC, as uh, potential winners. So what a good way to do that is go back to coin market cap and see if we have any of these pairs on. So let's see DNT, which is this district. Let's see what its ranking is um, right now. Or better yet, let me just see if it's in the 100, top 100. And uh, DS, that's that we're looking for uh, DNT. DNT. So it's not, it doesn't look like it's in the top. So district. Yeah, so it does. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think it's in the, all right, let me do it. This way, I'll go over to Binance. Or better yet, uh, let's go back to coin market cap. So we want D. So that's district zero X. Sorry if I got the pronunciation wrong. There's so many of these pairs out there. So right now it's not in the top 100. Let me see if the other one is as well. Uh, where's my Artie? 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 Where are you? Right here. So the other one I'm interested in is T U S D. Let's see how that is doing on coin market cap TUSD. So that's true USD. True US true USD. Okay, so let's see if it's in the top 100 here. So that's at number 24. So Knowing that it's up 0.51%, knowing that that kind of may legitimize this coin to watch uh, over the next week or so, as it's already in the top 25 of all the cryptocurrency pairs. Let's check out the third one here. Uh, going to, ooh, which one would that be? Again, that would be QKC Ethereum. That's another one that I don't know. But we'll do the same. So QKC, that is called QKC. So it's called Cork Chain. Don't, don't ask me about the names. Cork. So here, that one's in the 87th position. That's down according 4.7%. So knowing that, we have these are uh, different ones on the watch list here. Now, there's two ways we can measure the potential of this. Uh, first, we can look at the reports here, the Word documents. Or better yet, why don't we um, look at these charts here. So we will look at crypto most profit. And for those that are on the podcast, you can get a matching video on YouTube to ensure that you see these charts. And there, that can be said for all all uh, of my podcast episodes. So what you can s clearly see here is uh, these are hourly bars. So clearly right now we have a decent move up. So let me, knowing that, let me just pull up another process here um, to do the real time chart or call it whatever you want, but it's minute by minute. So we'll watch that and I'll open up another one on the other um, chart as well on the other crypto, just to see how the, the volatility is on this thing currently, because those are pretty good moves. Okay. Oh, hang on here. 
right. So, so let me. We are going to do real time chart on the pair of what's it called? QKC BTC. Let's watch this puppy. Okay, so I'll load up that chart. I'll open up another chart as well. Let's see if I can now. Just to let you know, these are not stable. I have to kill off some, release some memory here by closing up some uh, potential memory hogs here. Okay, so we've got the one chart. So here you see the chart on the one minute. Uh, it's clearly pretty volatile on the downside. This chart's very strange looking. Um, I can't say I've I've commented on Friday about EOS. It was just a very strange looking chart where it seems like the volume is not consistent, not enough volume to display the following minute bar here. As you can see here, there's been no moves, no moves here. Um, this is not maybe it's not enough volume compared to um, so. Anyways, none of that commentary because I don't know. So we'll do this one as well, and we'll look at the other potential guy, uh, Binance. So this is QKC BTC. Let me just see what the so that's the court that's court chain at number eighty-seven. So the other one I'm interested in is uh, let me just see here. Uh, okay, so that's clearly. So the other coin I'm looking want to look at is TUSD BTC. T U S. So we will look at uh, real time T U S D BTC. So we'll have two charts here. Let's see what, what what's going on here. Um okay, so this one, okay, a couple so the volume looks okay, it's consistent. But again, we're currently in a flat lining position. A big down move here at uh, 4 p.m. So that's about two and a bit hours ago. Um, flat, flat. I don't know why the reports are coming back that this is a mover. Um, just kill that chart. The other chart, let me just look at the um, chart. Let me... Okay, I'm gonna kill this. Let me just look at one more time at this other chart, the QKC. There's just not enough volume here to really consistently have minute bars. So that's something maybe to watch overall to trade. Um, but uh, let's see the other one was uh, DNTC Ethereum. But I wanna look at the hourly chart for this QKC Ethereum. Open, let's see here. LS, PNG. So what we want to look at is, Q, what was it, QKC? Yeah, this one right here. So we're gonna look at those hourly charts, see what that reveals. Okay, so again, we, we looked at this one that had some good up moves. But somewhere in in that space, it just it was lit. It was flat. Okay, so we'll look at this last one here, the DNT Ethereum. Um, so that's crypto. So these are the the uh, hourly charts for this one. Ooh, look at that big bar right there. Uh, that's in the last hour. So that's clearly something to watch on a minute by minute basis as well. Real time DNTC BTC. So let's see what's going on with that one. Okay. So where is this our, yeah. So this is our live chart here. Um, again, we are seeing some spurts of volume you can clearly see here on this monthly chart here or a minute by minute chart we've had some up moves here that's a good that's a good spike that's what we look for here we're seeing some good 
activity here in the last five minutes. So we'll keep this open, but you can clearly see that there's been some down moves here, those little whipsaws, we had a move up here, but this is the sort of thing we like to see. But again, it's those little whipsaws that we just do not like. In that case, let me just re so that's DNT, um, that was the DNT BTC. Okay, so let me just check the um, whipsaw list here. Uh, so our last set of, so that would be DNT BTC. So this is why this, this I don't know, again, um, DNT BTC was not on the whipsaw list because those are those whipsaws are measured over by the hour. So now this is brand new what we're doing to be able to analyze everything on a minute by minute basis. If I had put on a position, there would be a minute by minute analysis on this position for this particular cryptocurrency pair of DNT BTC. Thing though is um, now we're analyzing it and visually in real close to real time, but you can clearly see what we had here. Those little four uh, green bars, uh, we just got a red bar. So what I need to do is to measure these little whipsaws now, um, because uh, if we had put on a position here, I think we would still be okay on the, on the, on the, uh, on the position itself. A, a tiny, tiny, tiny profit on that whipsaw. So the question is, if we put on a position here, we had this up move. Now the question is, do we um, apply the ATR on that up move? We're happy with it, get out. Or do we allow the system to keep trading right here um, and hang on to that trade, even though there's a whipsaw, but we got to measure on the direction on this point at this bar, will it continue to move down? So we have to measure that. The only way we can do that is either on the RSI, because right now our RSI is undervalued, as well as our momentum is just slightly negative. So we got to use those. I could also look on a minute by minute basis um, at other things like the candles. So here, you can clearly see we had a wick and now it just it started to move up again. So again, we hang on to that trade. So these are the sort of things I'm going to be looking for over time to see where things go as I put positions on the watch list. Now, if you are familiar with how, we'll come back to this chart. Now, this is just for learning purposes. If you have um, known about my uh, his, his, historical uh, ways of trading. I used to have this thing called risk on a, a script called risk on. Um, <laughs> let me just make sure I get this. We'll, we'll come back to this in a minute. Uh, LS Python. It was called there's test risk and risk on. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two things. This is currently in real time. This will get the freshest data for the big, the biggest uh, crypto pairs out there. Or sorry, yeah, crypto pairs based upon um, volume. So right here, what we have are the moves of each of these pairs. So we have Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and uh, Ethereum Classic. <coughs> so you can clearly see Bitcoin Cash is not the big daddy. The big daddy is Bitcoin, so that will, by volume, uh, so we can do an overall measurement on the test risk. And historically, how I developed this older strategy is what I've done is I've taken these calculations, did a weighted average among th these five co uh, coins again, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, uh, Classic, and, and Ether. Um, and classically uh, weighted those volumes. This has not been looked at probably in about two to three months. So this may need to change these these measurements. Uh, where I get that from is quite simply over here at Coinbase. I like to use Coinbase as the standard on what Coinbase uses as their own metrics. So if you see here, these are the uh, big, big crypto pairs that they think that are very popular by volume. 
uh, again, those are uh, nothing has changed here. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin. But when you look at the uh, coin market cap by volume, where am I? Where is so we want? So load up coin market cap. So again, when you look at the overall volume of all the different pairs, um, this is this is how how uh, it's changed so much. So here we can either look at uh, by market cap or we could look at um, by volume. So let's say, for instance, Bitcoin's still the granddaddy, uh, number one. XRP, which is Ripple, is number two. Ethereum is number three. And then Stellar. And again, that was from, again, from the early days, uh, a year, well, six months ago. Stellar was the one that was getting up there in terms of popularity. Tether is uh, number five. So again, the question is, uh, do we change up these metrics based upon volume or sorry, market cap? Because you see EOS is getting up there. We also now have this new coin called Bitcoin SV. We have Litecoin dropping off to number nine. Tron is coming up and Cardano. So those are the shape how those uh, coins are shaping up. But again, I think everything should be driven by volume. So when you look at the 24 hour volume, we have Bitcoin number one, Tether number two, Ethereum number three, EOS number four, and then Litecoin at number five, and then XRP, let's say number six. So these are changing so fast that maybe I need to change this metric here, what I calculate or what I call risk for the risk on if it's worthwhile to trade. But I'm also thinking that is now completely irrelevant. Why? Because when you, again, look at the basic charts that I'm just looking at, I mean, we got, uh, no matter what, you got this kind of chart here at DNT BTC with this major move. So there are coins out there that we don't know about on Binance that are trading by volume, by uh, the opportunity that's given to you. So we need to readjust the strategy to account for these type of, uh, for these type of uh, uh, coins. But they, then again, we still have to use, which is I've been using now and, and focusing on our, what are the potential of the um, whipsaws that move against you. When you put on a position, you can clearly see, again, same pair, DNT, BTC. You can clearly see that this is a, is a very hard measurement to use because right now, this may be the down, the down, uh, the, the down coin, but there may be another coin that may uh, have moved up for better performance. And the best way to check that is by going over to the Binance chart. So you can see the new factors that we need to uh, calculate here and readjust the strategy to get optimal profit. But at the end of the day, no matter how you slice it, um, the, big, the, the, the coin market cap and all the risk on and what's, what's trading and what's, what's driving up uh, the overall asset class of crypto is what to, seems to me is being irrelevant because there will also be other coins that are doing quite well. And as I said, the one way to determine that is by volume, volume, like where, where, where are people trading, especially on something like uh, Binance. So let me just show you uh, those charts again. So what I'm speaking of is again, these, uh, this, this pie chart that I showed earlier. So I may need to readjust the overall strategy to accommodate these newer coins that I've not seen before, but are clearly movers. Um, and uh, we got to account for those. All right, so that's pretty well it. Uh, we're in the early stages of readjusting everything based upon what we're analyzing the new uh, real-time minute-by-minute chart that I've got, which is gonna be very, very helpful in this analysis to be able to readjust these uh, strategies and outlook. All right, so I'm gonna turn it all off now and uh, we'll come back maybe tomorrow with something new or maybe tonight, I don't know, but we'll focus and uh, we'll keep in touch later.